So what do we mean when we say that something is a classic, particularly in the context of a cinematic adaptation of a pre-existing text? Well, as Frank Kermoda points out, the great English poet Alexander Pope, translating Horace, which of course also means adapting Horace, wrote, He who lasts a century can have no flaw. I hold the wit a classic, good in law. And that's it. Your piece of art basically has to last only a hundred years in order to become a classic. But reading deeper into Frank Kermoda's work on the classic, I think that what Pope is really getting at is that a classic does at least four things. The first is that a classic gives us access to a privileged moment of creation, the era in which a thing was created, and also perhaps the geographical territory. Now, a second thing that a classic allows us to see is the process by which it was preserved and adapted over time, both forwards and backwards. So in other words, a classic lets us trace the different versions that have been made based on it, not just back to the privileged moment of its creation, but to many of the key moments that influenced that act of creation and that made that act of creation possible. So in other words, a classic reveals its own genealogy in some particular way. Now another thing here is that a classic is a classic because it, has, it produces a feeling of timelessness. Classics are never closed. They are always capable of inspiring an infinite number of alternate performances. And in terms of adaptation, you know, some of these new performances or new adaptations, new versions and so forth, sequels even fall under this rubric. Some of them get better, some of them get worse. And it's always fascinating because it's impossible to know who's going to like what, who will take pleasure in a remake. Uh, it's often surprising who does and who doesn't. And from an investor's standpoint, it's impossible to know what will work and what will fail. Is it going to be financially successful? Is it going to be critically successful? No one can really say. But often classics are, are drawn upon and are used because they are perceived to be bankable and for many of the same reasons that Kermoda is pointing out. So to sum up, a classic is something that's capable of connecting with our contemporary world in a very real way that brings us back to the point in time that the classic was created and it grants meaning both to that time that it was created and to our own time. And I think that an interesting question to pose is whether a classic can actually do anything to us in terms of adaptation if we don't know that the adaptation is based on a classic source. So take Emma, for example. Is it the case that Jane Austen's Emma is a classic because a bunch of competent professors sit around at universities and force their students to read it and say, you know, a bunch of profound things about that novel and students write great essays about it and so forth? Or is Jane Austen's Emma a classic because someone like Amy Heckerling used it to make Clueless and fascinated us with that story, not necessarily thinking that we would go back and read that novel? of our own free will and educate ourselves about its history, which of course is something that happened. But is it necessary for that to happen in order for that sense of it being a classic to come through in the adaptation? Again, that's subjective matter and it's also a matter of a bit of gambling because of the way films are made and uh, the conditions that go into making a film su successful are not always predictable. Uh, but the question is, is do we need to know that Clueless is based on a classic in order to move us and be a successful film? And it's a very interesting question to which we could add something, which is that whenever we're talking about adaptation as an artistic practice, we might always add the question of the future. Because who knows, someone might be inspired to read the screenplay of Clueless, watch the film, and maybe make a new version and we could then wonder about whether that new version that's not based on Emma at all doesn't even know that Emma was a precursor in the lineage of that text would that have some of that influence of the classic is there some sort of deep skeletal structure that uh, must travel on like the deep bones of something that just keeps going 
or is there some kind of essence or is there no guarantee whatsoever that a classic can have an afterlife?